morning church of the islands. How are we all doing today? Good. Morning. Good morning. You guys ready to worship? Yeah. Okay, let's uh, before we get worship, let's start off with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. I pray that you touch each and every one of our souls and hearts with your love and your mercy. Let's sing out your praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Would you stand with us? Let's get into it. Let's bless the name of the Lord.
Junior, and um, our Ben, our worship team. Wasn't that great? Yeah. yeah. Woo! You, you may be seated. Yeah, I didn't plan on preaching this morning, but uh, I looked at my phone yesterday about 3 o'clock, got a text from Pastor Ted, and asking if I can fill in for him because he wasn't feeling well. So let's, uh, let's open up in prayer this morning. <clears throat> Wonderful Heavenly Father, God, we just want to thank you so much, God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for bringing us back together into your sanctuary, God. That we can see each other face to face, Lord. We know that you're always watching over us. And that we are forever on your side. Lord, we just want to lift up Pastor Ted this morning. That you give him your healing touch. God strengthen his body and strengthen his spirit. And Lord, I just want to thank you for this worship team that play and lead us in worship this morning. God bless them as they go through their day. And Lord, we thank you, God, for giving us the privilege to hear from your word this morning. So God, I just beg for your Holy Spirit to be present, to open up our heart, our mind, and our ears for the truth that you prepare to reveal to us this morning. Not necessarily what we want to hear, but what you want us to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, this morning I want to talk to you from uh, Isaiah 45, verse 22. Isaiah 45, 22 says, Look to me, all you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. Look to me and be safe, all you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. Where are we looking for answers to the myriads of problems that we are facing? This morning, let me just encourage you to look to God for answers. First, we need to look to God for salvation. Second, we need to look to God for sustenance. And third, we need to look to God for our sanctification. We must first look to God for salvation from sin. Sin is the root cause of all our troubles, anxiety, and fear. The Bible says that all have sinned and the wages of sin is death. The fear of death is what torments every soul until he find relief in Jesus Christ. For there is no other name given among men by which we can be saved except in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Though God declare that all have sinned and deserve death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, His Son, our Savior. John 3, 16 to 18 says this, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever, whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. If you believe and trust it in the Son of God for salvation? If you have not, you need to confess your sin to God and repent from your sin. 
Because the Bible says if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And God is not willing that any should perish, but come to repentance. And that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, one believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. If you have never done this, I will give you an opportunity to do so before our time of communion. So we look to God for salvation. We must also look to God to sustain us in our earthly journey. Because when we become children of God, we automatically become pilgrims in this world. We are living in enemy territory. We are surrounded by enemies. That's why the Bible says, cast your burden on the Lord. And he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. Psalm 55, 22. Cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. <coughs> he shall never permit the righteous to be moved. And God will sustain you in three different ways. He will provide for what you need. He will protect you from harm and from your enemies. And God will preserve you until He calls you home when your job is done for God, when your ministry is completed. See, God promised to the prophet Isaiah, He said, Even to your old age, I am He. And even to gray hairs, I will carry you. I have made and I will bear. I will carry and will deliver you. Isaiah 46, 4. And Moses, the man of God, reminded Israel before they entered the promised land that the Lord your God carried you as a man carries his son in all the way that you went until you came into this place. The psalmist says, I have been young and now I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging for bread. Psalm 37, 25. Do you need more assurance that God will provide, protect, and preserve you? Turn with me. If you have a Bible or you're from your iPhone, turn with me to Psalm 121. Psalm 121. We're going to read it together. <clears throat> Psalm 121. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence come my help? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keep Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve you you're going out and you're coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. Amen. 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 So look to God for salvation and look to God for your sustenance. God is the only one we can look to and depend upon for our sanctification. Amen. God told the prophet Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctify you, I ordain you a 
profit to the nations. Jeremiah 1, 5. After the Lord saved us, he made us his new creation. He changed our direction. And so instead of heading to hell, he turned us around to head to heaven, a new destination. And Christ gave us his promised Holy Spirit to guide us so that in our early journey, we can become more and more like Jesus in thoughts, words, and deeds. This is the process of sanctification. And you and I is going through this. We'll continue to go through this. Paul writing to the Thessalonians in Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 3 to 7 says for this is the will of God your sanctification that you should abstain from sexual immorality that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God that one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter. Because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarn you and testify. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. Therefore, he who reject this does not reject man, but God who has given us his Holy Spirit. See, nothing and no one can help us in this process of sanctification but Jesus Christ. Amen. And the writer of Hebrew talks about this when he talks about Jesus in Hebrews chapter 2. He says, For it was fitting for him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory. That's us. To make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. For what he who sanctifies, that's, it, that's Jesus, and those who are being sanctified, that's us, are all of one. For which reason he, Jesus, is not ashamed to call them brethren. Thank you, Jesus. Brethren. And before Jesus went to the cross, he prayed for our sanctification. In John 17, verses 16 to 19, this is the prayer of Jesus for our sanctification. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. Because of that prayer for Jesus, I am confident that I have nothing to worry about my sanctification because Jesus has prayed for me. Then I want you to have the same confidence. Yes, you and I will stumble, mm -hmm. will fall, and will fail. But Jesus said, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Amen? Yeah. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. And in 2 Corinthians 9, 8, this is what the Bible says. God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance 
for every good work. Because God created us and saved us to do good works. So look to God for salvation from sin. Nothing and no one can save you from the penalty of sin, which is death, destruction, and everlasting torment from here to eternity. Look to God for sustenance in your earthly journey. Nothing and no one can consistently provide for your physical, emotional, and spiritual need. Nothing and no one can protect you from the storms of life and the attack of the enemy of your soul. Nothing and no one can preserve you until you reach your final destination, heaven. Look to God for your sanctification. Nothing and no one can wash away your sins but the blood of Jesus Christ. And nothing and no one can help you become more like Jesus but the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, let me read you a story. You might have heard this before, but I can read this story over and over and not get tired of it. <laughs> On Sunday, January 6, 1850, a young man, not quite 16 years of age, walked through a village street in a little town some 50 miles from London. On a bitterly cold day, the snow fell heavily, but he was more concerned to find a church because he was deeply conscious of his need of God and of the breakdown, sin, and failure of his life even at that young age. As he made his way through the street with the snow falling, he felt it was too far to go to the church we had intended to visit. So he walked down a back alley and entered a small chapel. He sat down on the seat near the back. It was cold inside as it was out. There were only about 13 people there. Five minutes after the service was to, due to begin at 11 o'clock, the regular preacher for the morning hadn't come. He had been delayed by the weather. So one of the deacons came to the rescue and began conducting the service. And after a little while, announced this text. Look unto me and be ye safe, all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. The deacon did know much. So he only spoke for about 10 minutes. And this young man described the impact of that simple 10 minute sermon like this. He said, I had been wandering about, seeking rest and finding none, till a plain and letter lay preacher stood up in the pulpit and gave out this passage as his text. Look unto me and be ye safe, O the ends of the earth. He had not say, he had not much to say, thank God, for that compelled him to keep on repeating his text. And there was nothing needed by me at any rate except his text. I remember how he said, It is Christ that speaks. I am in the garden in an agony, pouring out my soul unto death. I am on the tree, dying for sinners. Look unto me. Look unto me. That is all you have to do. A child can look. One who is almost an idiot can look. However weak, however poor a man may be, he can look. And if he looks, the promise is that he shall live. Then stopping, he pointed to where I was sitting under the gallery and said, 
That young man there looked very miserable. I expect I did, for that how is I felt. Then he said, There is no hope for you, young man, or any chance of getting rid of your sin, but looking to Jesus. Then he shouted, Look, look, young man, look now. And I did. And when they sang a hallelujah before they went home, in their own earnest way, I'm sure I joined in it. It happened to be a day when the snow was lying deep and more was falling. So I went home. Those words of David keep ringing through my heart. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. And it seemed as if all nature was in accord with that blessed deliverance from sin, which I had found in the single moment by looking to Jesus Christ. He continues, he says, somehow, in a very strange and amazing way, that young man looked from the depth of his soul into the very heart of God. He went out of the church and he tells that as he walks in the street, his burden had been lifted, never to return again. He walked with a new spring in his step, a new joy in his face, and a new sense of peace in his heart. He had looked and lived. This young man was Charles Adams Virgin, mm. known to known all of a Christian as the Prince of Preacher. And he is one of the best, if not the best preacher. Mm. See, Charles Virgin. In his desperation and in his burden for sin, looked to God for salvation and found it. He looked to God for sustenance and God blessed him abundantly throughout his life in his ministry. Tens of thousands came to Christ through his preaching during his lifetime. And we don't know how many more throughout the ages benefited through his preaching, his teaching, his writing, even until today. I am one of them. That's why I'm sharing with this story this morning. Since the fall of Adam and Eve until today, our great sin is idolatry. Man in his fallen sinful state is always looking at something else. It's always looking to get away from looking at God. Right after they ate the fruit, Adam and Eve ran and hid from God. They didn't want to be looking at God. God is real, but invisible. So man wants a God he can see. The gods that he can make. Because if you have a God that you can see and make, he is a God of your own creation. Mm -hmm. You control that God. So you are the God. Mm -hmm. That is idolatry, folks. See, these are gods that sinful men are comfortable with. Because his heart is controlled by Satan, who has blind, blinded the heart of sinful men to the truth that God is real. God can deliver. Yes, God can protect. Yes, God can provide. God can sustain. Okay. He is the creator. Is the sustainer of life. Is the sovereign God. He alone can save. He alone can provide, protect, preserve, and restore man to his original plan, which is to give man dominion over his creation. And we know that this plan is working and it will surely happen as all of God's plan will. 
If you continue on to the next verse, which is Isaiah 45, verse 23, the Bible says, I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and should not return, that to me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall take an oath. Then we all know that this is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Because we read in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 10 and 11, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of those in heaven, those that are on earth, and those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that what? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, the writer of Hebrews says, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, one of them we just read, Charles Spurgeon, <coughs> many others, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. For the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Whatever struggle, whatever problem you have, that you're facing now, Look to God for answer. Look to Jesus and live. Not just live, but live abundantly. In this difficult time, we, most of us, we look everywhere for answers. Let's look to Jesus Amen. first. Amen. Let's stay focused on Jesus. Amen. You know, it's been a very difficult six months. You know, there's so many times that I struggle. You know, struggle with disappointment, discouragement. You know, there's so many times you know, when I'm ready to give up, you know, like when I'm writing, I know that some of you are getting my weekly message, that there are so many times when as I write, you know, I feel like, no, I, I really should stop doing this, okay? I don't have any energy. You know, I don't even, God, I don't, I can't do this anymore. You know, but then, you know, God always called me back and said, look to me. You know, I will give you the word to share. Amen. Mm -hmm. Look at me. I will sustain you. All of us, mm -hmm. if we're here this morning, it's because we look to God. Yes. And He sustained us. That's why we're here this morning. Amen. And we can go home and be confident that tomorrow, the next day, God is going to to sustain us yes. and preserve us Amen. if we continue to look upon him. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Wonderful Heavenly Father, God, we just want to thank you, God. We thank you for bringing our focus back on you. Lord, this world is giving us so much distraction. Offer so many different answers. But Lord, thank you that the only answer is you. Help us to continue to look to you. Don't let us Lose our focus on you. 
Don't let us lose our focus on the cross where Jesus can only die to pay for our sin, but he died so that we can have this abundant life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now it's time for us to uh, prepare for communion. I'm sure if you didn't have one, you're welcome to go out and grab one of this uh, development packet out to the mall. If you have not made the decision for Christ to be your Lord and Savior, today, this very moment, you too can look to God for salvation. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believe unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If the Holy Spirit of God is calling you to put your trust in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, please be merciful to me a sinner. I repent of my sins. Lord Jesus, please forgive me. Lord, I believe that you are the Son of God. You suffer, you die to pay for my sins. I believe you are alive. You rose from the dead. You conquered death, God, that I may have eternal life. I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, please let your Holy Spirit live in me that I may worship you forever in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. Amen. If you pray that prayer for the first time, the Bible says that all the angels in heaven rejoice. On the night before Jesus suffered and died for our sins, he took bread and broke it. With different thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat in remembrance. He also took the cup of the supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. Let's drink together. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you for our time together this morning, God. We thank you for your word, God. And we thank you for giving us another privilege to celebrate communion, to remember all that you did for us. So, Lord, just be with us as we go from here for the rest of the day, the rest of this week, God. Help us to continue to focus on you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now let me dismiss you with this word from Revelation 22. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David the bright and morning star. And the spirit of the bride says, Come, and let him who hears say, Come, and let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. God bless you all. Thank you.